Well, hello and welcome to this weekend edition of the Daily Dose of Greek. And today we're going to talk about TDNT, the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, also known as Kittel. There's an abbreviated version of it called Little Kittel. <laughs> so uh, this is edited by Gerhard Kittel. You probably know, many of you may know, this was originally in German and translated into English. You may even be one of those people that, that was going to seminary decades ago as it was coming out volume by volume. Uh, I recently talked with a retired pastor. He said, oh yeah, I was excited. I, I got that, I think he paid, set, paid $250. I said, well, you can get it now on sale at Christian Books for $100, the whole series. That was, so that was not a great investment, was it? Especially when you factor in inflation, he really paid a lot for that series. So, TDNT, Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, edited by Kittle, many authors. I think it's about 10 volumes. I mean, it's big. It's like, and the, the earlier version of this, maybe you're familiar with it, had a blue cover. So it's like a blue whale on the bookshelf there, all those volumes together. Um, why would you want this? Well, uh, recently I had a seminar and we were translating from Acts, Acts 17. And it's interesting that passage, if you look at it, the Athenians are puzzled by Paul. They don't really understand what he's doing. They're talking amongst themselves. They say he seems to be advocating foreign deities, foreign divinities. And if you look at the underlying Greek there, it's uh, the word uh, daimonion, right? It's, it's, it's a form of daimonion. And it kind of jars people because they say foreign demons, because really pretty consistently throughout the rest of the New Testament, that, that refers to an evil spirit, a demon, as we would say in English. Um, but in broader usage, especially more in the classical period, daimonion could just mean supernatural being or spirit or uh, divinity or something like that, which is sort of how it's being used by in the, in the mouth of these Athenians. And uh, I had a student ask, well, at what point did Jews begin to use the Greek word daimonion just for an unclean spirit? Like when did that happen? And how did that narrow linguistically for them to be that specific as opposed from the broader usage? And I thought about it. I didn't know the answer. I said, well, I know where we, where we can look and, and probably find the answer to that, TDNT. And it's true. Look up TD, look up the article on Daimonion and TDNT. Many, many pages talking about um, time periods and the, how it was used in extra biblical uh, literature in Greek. And it, it, it's uh, it's fascinating and helpful with a couple of caveats. Okay, one of the key caveats with TDNT is it's mainly written by liberal German theologians. So many different contributors, and most of them have a commitment to liberal German theology. So when I turned to that article, I was expecting it to be very skeptical about the supernatural and to sort of just view this as front through the lens of human uh, evolutionary development of a religion or something like that. So they're not really committed to a Christian worldview. At the same time, you can sometimes find some helpful linguistic and historical information if you are alert to those biases. Okay, so I wouldn't give this to like a seventh grader <laughs> doing their report on demons. That would be very confusing to them, some seventh grader in a Christian school. But I assume if you're patient to watch the video to this point and you subscribe to The Daily Dose, you would have the wisdom to sift through um, those skeptic skeptical assumptions and biases um, that you would find there. Um, second caveat, just something to be aware of, not wanting to jump in on the cancel culture. We, we want to say we could disagree with this person, but we can also learn from their insights. And it is true that quite a few of the contributors to this were um, Nazi sympathizers. Okay, so this was written um, during the time pre-World War II. And so that's a horrible thing to discover. It's horrible to think about. Um, that uh, in Germany, we found people who were resisting the Nazis, who were faithful Christians, like Dietrich Bonhoeffer. We also found people who were capitulating and going along and even unaware or, you know, they just did, you know, horrible things in, in affirming or at least not resisting uh, what was happening. 
So that's a caveat, something we have to be aware of. Um, liberal German bias and also some of the political commitments and backgrounds of some of the contributors to the, vol to the volumes in TDNT. Having said that, uh, I don't know where else I would have found some of that historical and linguistic information uh, as quickly as I did if I was looking in the volume here in TDNT. I hope that gives you some background. Again, it seems to me every six months you can find a sale on this at Christian Books. Christianbooks.com, they'll sell the whole set for hundred bucks or 125 bucks or something like that. So it's, it's, you can get it very cheap. And of course, Bible software programs like Logos, um, you can get it in digital copy very inexpensively too. All right. Good to visit with you this Saturday. Uh, hope to see you again soon.